Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about a new update that Crunchyroll has announced for the end of April and the like I think the start of July. No wait, no, May comes out start of may so essentially they've done a quick announcement and all of it is around Ilya, who's finally coming so now we know that Ilya is spelt with two l's i've been wanting to know that for a while a lot of you guys have been hearing about Ilya. i will cover Ilya in depth in another video because Ilya herself is actually game breaking to the pvp meta she is definitely usable in cb for the upcoming cb she is featured in a comp for b5 however Ilya is famous for her pvp and i will <laughs> it's going to take a couple of videos maybe even to cover that there are just so many many counters and so many comps that you can run with her but like generally you know what we'll save that for another video coming back on track we're essentially getting Ilya herself as well as the event finally which is awesome and i think we also have some new game updates which is uh very interesting following on from that we also have two times dungeon mana and the grotto quest so as always i'll run through each of these and i'll give my thoughts about them because otherwise i'd just be reading from this page and that'd be kind of cringe like i got to make my own content right all right let's start with the Ilya banner the first thing that i always look at <laughs> is how long is the Ilya banner or how long is the character's banner it's kind of better this time because Ilya is kind of game breaking so it allows people to kind of save up for her a little bit longer i think the passive normal gem income is pretty crappy like you know the arena or like the you know a cb only comes once a month or something but with that being said what we can see is that Ilya's banner has been stretched out five days longer this is in comparison to the japanese server but you can take that as how you may like you could like it you could not you tell me how to feel about it at this point i'm kind of numb personally i would still rather it be shorter than longer but you know what i'm i'm not even mad anymore this is okay this is okay so what we have after Ilya is the story event so we have vampire hunters with Ilya, and in this one we will be getting the maho and the car shards unfortunately we will not be getting the Ilya shards we'll only get the maho as the five star is it four star no it's three star sorry guys too many gacha games we'll have maho as the featured three star so that's about like 65 from here but you guys already know there's more from achievements there's more from all of that other stuff the farmable nodes so if you guys remember back it's going to be like about a hundred like of the maho shards in total and about like 80 shards for kari so you know like what are the implications for you now so if you already have a five star maho or a five star kari don't be sad because what this means is that this is going to prep you a little bit for when unique equipment comes out unique equipment for the first time acquisition of it you need at least 50 shards and after that you actually still need shards to keep upgrading it so if you already have maho or kari at five stars again like don't be too sad about it those hundred shards just means that you don't have to farm it later for kari this is especially important because she is featured in one of the more competitive shops maho it's kind of a whatever but like kari yeah this it's it's fine like all of it it's fine so after this event we have got the game update news so this is a really really interesting one and why i say it's interesting is because it's not lined up with cb which they decided to do to us last cb so this is good what we're getting i believe is area 12 so let me give you a quick sneaky preview of area 12 so as you guys can see here we're still in the desert and then we go into the mountains briefly you know honestly i don't know why i talk about this because like this there's 17 stages and we get new free jammies that's that's pretty much the crux of this part after that let's hop into the hard mode and we've got mahiru second shiori node and second akino node i reckon this is massive because everyone that's trying to get their shioris to five star or four star or whatever like oh god bless the second node come on man for a lot of people this might mean that you will get five star shiori before the next clan battle and if so good on you because i will still be sandbagging my clan because my rng will not permit me to have this shiori as for the akino node what this means is that it will be easier to either summon or five star the akino however akino is more typically the utility type you don't bring her for the damage right you usually bring her for the heal and so honestly she performs all right at three star already so yeah for people like me who don't have akino this could be the chance to actually get her mahiru all you memes all you mahiru gang like you guys this is your note there's not much to talk about if you guys already use her you already know what's up but again this is back to her <laughs> this is going to be a lot of stamina that's an extra 120 that i'm going to need all right so after area 12 we will have nine five so character slots to five at rank nine currently we are at r93 and <laughs> guys r95 is it's every time every time it's just hell again it's just hell again you guys remember these purple bad boys yeah 
it's these guys next. <laughs> oh God, help me. I think it's called like a sun badge or something, but essentially it's equivalent of like these guys. And obviously for the magic and the tank users, it's the same thing. Plan ahead what you need and farm it out because at least this time we'll be able to go into CB with some level of stability. I actually have a video that's already uploaded about R93 to R95, but it just didn't get approved. When it's approved, I'll let that through, but essentially what's really important is look for the stuff with the TP gain and the TP boost and you pretty much should be gravy. All right, back to it. We'll get more parts to chapter six of the main story. Honestly, I reckon the main story of Precon is pretty interesting and you can discover, okay, well, they mentioned the memory shards for Mahiru, Shiori and Akino as well. So I guess, uh, what value do I bring? What do I, what do I give to you guys? We've also got a level cap from 93 to 98. That's a five level cap increase. I think from here on out after the first like two months ish, it will always be five level cap increases. All right, then we've got the dungeon mana times two. That's it's only good things, guys. It's only good things. As long as these events keep going on rotation, you know, I cannot even be mad. So it looks like we'll be getting the 2x dungeon mana on the 4th of the 24th, which is the 24th of April. If you guys still don't know how to rig the dungeon mana for the event, I would suggest learning how to do so. I've included a couple of guides. Like if you look back to my videos, I'm sure I've mentioned it somewhere. I've even made a post about it, but like if you guys don't know, I will leave a short summary somewhere and a reminder. Lastly, we've got Grotto Quest times two, and I don't think we can rig this one at all. Like it is what it is. All right, let's have a look at the summary. So we've got Ilya coming in about six days. We've got the story event that is coming with it in six days, and they both last the same duration. Then we've got the May content drop on the 12th of May, which is pretty interesting. It's typically, like I think CB is going to happen around the end of the month now. Then we've got double dungeon drops happening in two days. I think that might be immediately after our H2 right now. And then we've got the Grotto double drops that happens immediately after that. So with all this in mind, there is a website that I would recommend, which is the Precon EN event schedule. So this is really nice. So the guy who made this is active on Reddit and he's taken a lot of the feedback. And this is really nice because it actually scales with like um, mobiles and stuff. But essentially it's just a countdown of all the events and of like what's upcoming as well. So you can see here, the ones that are going right now are in progress and they're also shaded gray. And the ones that are coming up are in black. All right, one more thing that I want to talk about is actually, <laughs> oh guys, I don't know how to, um, how to talk about this, I suppose. So currently on this server, we are having those free daily 10 times pulls. If I remember correctly on JP, those 10 times pulls lasted for well, 10 times. What that means is that JP actually got a hundred pulls in total. I think 20 of those pulls were on the Ilya banner. I think what a couple of people have realized by now is that we are only going to be getting 90 pulls in total and we will only get 10 pulls on the Ilya banner. On the last day, you do have a choice. I think you could either use it on the Hatsune or you can use it on the Ilya banner. I don't know what to make of this. Like, you know, oh no, Crunchyroll is being not generous anymore. I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Maybe the timings didn't line up or something, but that is something I do need to point out. Otherwise, like generally a lot of exciting things. I can finally get my Maho and my Kari to five star and I can finally gear up before freaking CB drops again. Like, oh my God. If we get up to like May 12th and Clan Battle is like announced for May 12th, I'm going to be like, oh. but yeah, lots of good updates. Nothing like really exciting. I guess like, you know, if you guys like stories, this is a pretty cool one. I do like the stories, but yeah, a pretty exciting update, especially for Arena. Like the meta is going to change pretty drastically again. When Kyoka was introduced, the meta shifted quite a fair bit, but now that we've got Ilya coming in, like I know I told you guys before, but Ilya essentially makes a lot of team comps redundant. That is not to say that Ilya is unbeatable, but it just becomes a case of like rock, paper, scissors. Honestly, that's not really different to the meta right now. Like, you know, every defense is beatable. It's just that sometimes they have 25 stars and then that makes it a little bit unbeatable. All right, guys, I think I've covered everything in here. So let's wrap it up here. Today, let's go with the secret question. I want to know if you guys are going to be pulling for Ilya. My clan in particular, we said you either get Kyoka or you get Ilya. And if you choose Ilya, you have to go five stars because she will be pretty useless without it. I was like, well... F that, I'm going Kyoka, man. So for me personally, I'm not going to go too deep for Ilya, unfortunately. This might mean that I suffer in Arena, but that's on me. So yeah, you guys let me know down in the comments below, are you guys going for Ilya? And if you guys are going for Ilya, are you guys going for her because she's like a vampire mommy or because she is going to be cracked at Arena? All right, well, there's nothing left to be said except if you have found this video actually a little bit enjoyable or informative, then consider like liking, commenting, subscribing. This is the call to action. You already know what to do. But otherwise, exciting times ahead. I still love this game. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.